Welcome to Click. I'm Spencer Kelly. Right now, you may very well be watching me on a fairly new, super slim, widescreen plasma or LCD TV. Well, aren't you, Flash? But just when you thought you bought the newest of the new and the greatest of the great, turns out there's a possible successor to these screen technologies waiting in the wings. It's called OLED. We've talked about it on Click before, and it promises brighter and sharper images. Problem is, OLED won't hit the mainstream for several years yet. Not a problem. We sent Ian Hardy into the future. Not too far, because he gets a bit travel sick. And he came back with this report. If you're not familiar with organic light-emitting diodes, you soon will be. OLED screens display a stunning picture based on red, green and blue pixels. Far better than the one you're watching right now. Of course, you have to see it in real life to truly appreciate it. Well, the first thing you notice is that if you move out to the side, or you move above it or below it, you will see the same image at the same brightness as you would if you were facing it straight on. That's quite different from other display technologies such as LCD. Another instant eye-opener is the thickness of the screen itself, about three millimeters at most. That's because there's no backlight. Each pixel is made from organic material that emits its own light. So hanging an OLED TV on the wall requires a nail rather than scaffolding. In fact, paintings and prints could be replaced by multiple OLEDs around the house. Indeed, Kodak, who invented the first basic OLED device in the 1970s, already sell a small photo frame. But there's just one drawback, which is true of any current OLED gadget, the cost of making it. Right now, this product is, you know, $1,000. And that is not necessarily in the reach of the mass consumer. So there's, there's going to be an adoption curve that's going to have to take place in order to get to price points that will be available to the general consumer. Select cell phones and MP3 players have been outfitted with one or two inch OLED displays for the past few years. Sony's newest Walkman has a 3-inch OLED screen, potentially making it an iPod Touch killer. And OQO's latest handheld computer features a 5-inch OLED screen, which again won't leave you with much cash, but might well impress your friends. Truly uh, is remarkable to see. It has a fantastic contrast ratio. Um, the blacks are very much blacker than you would see and uh, it just comes out as a really brilliant display. When you're outside shooting with a, with a digital still camera, one of the challenges is the sunlight tends to wash out the display. And as more and more cameras don't have the little viewfinder, you want to see what you're shooting. One of the great advantages of OLED is that it is bright, even in direct sunlight. You can see what you're shooting, and it looks natural. In the TV and computer world, it could be the next decade before we truly see giant OLED screens. But manufacturers have said they intend to scale up from the current entry-level 11-inch screen. By the end of 2009, they hope to be selling panels in the 14 to 21-inch range. Current commercially available OLED displays compare very favorably to almost any other screen technology found today on shop shelves. But the future of OLED in many form factors is very bright indeed, although it could be years before you and I see such devices in our homes. For example, flexible OLED is perfect for hosting a video conference on your sleeve, or following directions from it. And of course, it's an obvious way to increase screen size on cell phones and PDAs. Clothing could be made of this in the future, too. OLEDs are transparent by nature, so our living room windows could double as video screens, showing TV programs or vivid sunsets or waterfalls, instead of what most of us have to put up with now, urban sprawl. In the immediate future, OLED lighting panels are likely to appear on our ceilings and walls, especially in new buildings. Lamps, hanging bulbs and fixtures could all disappear. OLEDs are more efficient than fluorescent bulbs, and yet they have no mercury, they have no glass, they're easier to do away with, and they're, easy, and they're easier on the eyes. They have a much more pleasant light. The challenge at this stage in OLED's evolution is to turn the prototypes and concept pieces into reality. 
There's no question OLED will make a big difference in our lives, but because of the global downturn, it may be introduced slower than we'd like, as manufacturers try to squeeze longer shelf life from existing LCD and plasma models. Ian Hardy with one possible future for the super slim screen. But enough of tomorrow's technology for a couple of minutes. Let's find out what's happening right now with this.